guys welcome to sunny Florida here uh, one of my most popular requested videos lately has been for me to update my RV evolution video which kind of just abruptly ends it and now here we are in Tilly and that was back in 2013 so what I want to do today is add to that um, so what you're going to see here in the first part of the video is going to be some video that I already filmed in 720p years ago. So bear with me. That's why this video quality is a little low. And then I will continue right where we left off and get you up to date with the rest of my RV experience here. I thought I would do a quick re request video from uh, David who uh, asked me, you know, it might be interesting to find out um, what kind of RVs I've lived in before living in this one, kind of uh, what the difference between those RVs and the kind of the path that led me to be in the Tioga that I am now. And I started looking through some of my old pictures and I found a bunch of pictures of all my past RVs. So I thought I could do a little montage here, talk a little bit about uh, everything and kind of give you guys a slideshow so you can see some pictures and stuff and talk about that. And uh, wow, 7,000 subscribers now here to Nomadic Fanatic. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. I was pretty darn happy about 7,000 subs, huh? <laughs> now we have 120,000. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, start from the beginning. So up until about 2009, I was always a tent camper and pretty much only when it was nice outside and in the summertime. But in early 2010, I upgraded to a Ford Explorer as my commuter and I began to camping more, but still in tents. In spring of 2010, my ex bought a 1978 Dodge Vogue Class C motorhome. It was surprisingly a good RV, and we only used it twice in two months. So we sold it two months later to be able to afford some maintenance on the Explorer. We broke up in June of 2010, and I used my summer money to buy my first RV. I found a 1979 Toyota Dolphin on Craigslist for $2,200. I got a ride up there, I fell in love, I offered him $1,700, and he shook on it. I had about 20 days to transition into the Dolphin from the apartment and sell all the stuff that was left in the apartment. I'd planned to stay at Elma RV Park for the summer. and By the end of the month, it had rained three days and I found multiple roof leaks all over the inside of the Toyota. I tarped it, left it in Aberdeen, and attempted to check into Elma RV Park. But she told me at the counter that I can't have an RV with a tarp on it. So I took off. Called around, found the same rule at every RV park within 60 miles. I left Elma RV Park after one week and officially began my urban camping lifestyle on the side of the road. I kept that RV through the winter and finally moved into a room for rent and cleaned out the Dolphin and put it on Craigslist for $1,500. $1, the RV sold in less than 24 hours for $1,100. At Ralph's Thriftway. I then bought a 1988 Ford Club Wagon van, and I was living in the van in less than two weeks from the time I moved into the room for rent. I spray painted the inside of the windows black for privacy and removed the seats. I put in a cot for a bed and used a cooler for food, getting a bag of ice every day. That van got me through the summer of 2011, barely. The tranny went out while I was parked at Walmart in Aberdeen, and I did the same thing by moving back into a room for rent with Jax while thinking I was going to just scrap the van. But I still sold it for 500 bucks cash right there in Walmart. Somebody wanted it. Two months later, I obviously hated the room for rent thing. I even traded my 1997 Pontiac Sunfire commuter car for a 1984 Chevy Aviator straight across after driving to Seattle to make the deal. I thought it was a terrible deal, but I needed to be mobile. The van made it back to Aberdeen just fine, but wouldn't start for the next two weeks after that. I moved in right away there anyway, in the back of the alley behind my old room for rent. Thankfully, the van did start after I took apart the car and cleaned it, but it was very picky. I lived in the Chevy van in and around Olympia, Washington for eight months, including the summer of 2012. I got my first solar shower and bathed right off the back of the van at campgrounds. Then in September of 2012, I bought a 1972 Comfort travel trailer for $2,000 in Yelm, Washington. I towed it with the van and paid up front three months of space rent at BMC RV Park in Olympia, right off the bus line. I then sold the van quickly for $800 at Martin Way Diner. But after two weeks at the RV park, I was already ready to leave. Gunshots, bombs being found, stabbings, theft domestic disputes with people yelling all night, music, party, bonfires. I had nowhere to go, 
but luckily a friend heard and helped me move the trailer to his property in Tumwater for a few months to get away from the BS. Then I found a Craigslist ad in the barter section, titled, Truck and Camper Combo for Trade for a Pull Trailer of Equal Value. It really seemed too good to be true. I emailed him, gave all the details, and sent pictures. He told me to come down and test drive the truck and camper. I drove an hour down there in a friend's vehicle, and I loved the setup. He said he would come up tomorrow to look at the RV, and I didn't believe I'd ever see him again. But he called me when he was a mile away and asked for exact directions. I didn't have time to clean or anything, and he pulled up in a huge Dodge 2500 dually pickup truck. I explained that I was currently living in the RV and didn't expect him. And ten minutes later, he said he wanted a trade. I was like, I need like three hours to get everything out, and how do, how do I get my truck? He said he was going to go eat, and then drive me and the trailer back down to his place in Rossy Rock. I threw everything I owned onto a tarp in the backyard and locked jacks in the garage while I went to get my truck and camper. I enjoyed that combo for six months right through the summer and seriously began my nomadic lifestyle. By July, I had decided it wasn't big enough for me and Jax. So, I found this Tioga on October 1st, 2013 on Craigslist. I traveled with a friend to test it out in Kenmore, Washington. But on the test drive back to the house, the front right caliper locked up and boiled the brake pad. Sadly, I had to leave without a negotiation. The next day, he called me up to say he had replaced the caliper and brake pad and would go down to $3,900 from his $4,500 original asking price. We went back up there, tested it, settled on $3,750, and I've been living in it ever since. Obviously, my RV life does not end with Tilly 1.0, as I finally decided to leave the comfort of the Northwest and finally go on the road in 2014. I set off for California, a 900-mile one-way trip where I didn't even have enough gas money to get back. I ended up staying 30 days in Slab City, as well as visiting a bunch of other stuff in California. I also had some really bad luck down in Eureka, California, as actually it looks like that video, that trifecta of bad luck where the officer involved shooting happened, that is still today my most popular video by views. At the end of my California trip, I had planned to go home, but I actually got an RV offer from someone I thought was legit in Tennessee. Turned out to be a complete troll, there never was an RV, and I made the entire trip from California to Tennessee for nothing. By then it was January, and I decided to just go straight south from where I was at, and I went to Panama City, Florida, where I met Wayne. He fixed up my rear drum brake problems and a few other things in the RV, and I really fell in love with Florida at that time. Unfortunately, there were just too many mechanical issues with Tilly at that time to be able to maintain and drive her. I did have to find new owners, and they decided they were going to park and live in Tilly. I actually lived out of a U-Haul van in Florida for about a week until my new friend Kevin, Camper Van Kevin on YouTube, offered me his black Ford camper van, which I named Bertha. I did a lot more customization to the van and I actually really did enjoy the van life even though I was lacking in things like a refrigerator, a shower, and running water. I drove Bertha all the way from Florida back to the other corner of the country in Washington State for the summer and kept making her comfortable until in the heat of summer I got an offer to trade Bertha the van for another early 80's Tioga RV and of course I jetted down to California again in just two days. I brought that RV back to Washington and then had to spend three months fixing it up. I mean nothing inside worked. The water heater didn't work. The fridge didn't work. There was no propane at all. We had to redo propane lines in the RV. But hey, by November 15th I was ready to hit the road and go south again. Unfortunately I did have some problems with what we called Olga the Tioga in California when the transmission went out around Christmas time. I had to park the RV for over a week, although I did get the transmission fixed, I was able to pay back the maintenance and loans I'd taken out by selling stickers on my channel. In fact, I sold so many stickers that I had to order more, and by that time I was even considering trading up the RV to something more reliable. I got to Mesa, Arizona, and I found my dream Class C Tioga RV named Yoda the Tioga here in 2017. I booked two nights at the Grand Canyon campground for her maiden voyage and the transmission went out 100 miles from the dealership. 
And actually, this is going to be news to most of the world except my close friends. You didn't even know that before. Yes, 100 miles away, the transmission on the new RV with 23,000 miles went out. The dealership, Always RV in Mesa, arranged to have the RV towed back. They parked me with full hookups for three days and they got it fixed and gave me the warranty. From there, I drove to Traveler's Camp Fest in Texas and then back to Florida to see Wayne again for a few fixes. And sure enough, a hundred miles east after I left Wayne's house, the transmission went out again. I was towed to Jacksonville Amco, under warranty from Amco, of course, so there was no hurries, but it did take eight days for them to figure out an actual solution and again replace the transmission under warranty. Luckily, I was able to live in the RV right there on site, out back where the lift was. I rented a little red car to drive around and film, and St. Augustine, Florida was my favorite spot to film and enjoy. Eventually, I got out of there with another one-year warranty, and I went to the Keys. I actually logged 42,000 miles on Yoda in 18 months. I fell in love with a girl, and we traveled together for eight months for a period in Yoda, sharing the nomadic life together. I got this RV with 23,000 miles and now it has over 65,000. Yoda is my RV. I have no plans to trade up ever again. I, I know it's going to happen, but for the immediate future, you can tell I've been putting a lot into this RV. I want to keep it on the road. I want to customize it and continue to make it the best vehicle it's going to be for Jackson and I on the road. So here we are, like I said, 120,000 subscribers, 65,000 miles on Yoda, and we'll see where we go from here.